Hi everybody, Prof Gordon here from Exam Success. And in this video, I've got a topic that I think is gonna count for a few questions on your CFA exam. So four potential questions we're gonna go through here. So we're gonna talk about the capital allocation line. I think there's four ways this could show up on the exam. So let's start with the, the basics. So we'll bring in a graph here and now, We've got on the vertical axis expected return, on the horizontal axis, this is standard deviation or total risk. Now, with this capital allocation line, we're allocating between a risky asset and a risk-free asset, such as a T-bill. And this now gives us an allocation model. Where do we place our assets? towards risk-free securities or risky securities. This is our capital allocation line. So it tells us where we are allocating. Now, let's just talk about the potential questions. Okay, so the first potential question is related to the concept of risk aversion. So let's just talk about risk aversion. So where an investor is on this allocation line is based upon their attitude towards risk. A highly risk averse individual will have an allocation down here, somewhere down here. This is uh, more weighting towards risk free assets. An investor that has a, a higher tolerance for risk or a lower risk aversion, make sure you know those, that difference, they will be somewhere over here. Higher allocation towards the risky, remember this is a risky investment, and less in the T-bill. So I think your first question could be, if this were portfolio one, and this were portfolio two, where would a highly risk averse investor most likely be? And your answer will be, of course, this lower, this portfolio here, which is comprised more of T-bills, risk-free assets, lower risk portfolio. Here's the risk down here. So this is the first question that relates to risk aversion. The second uh, type of question relates to portfolios that are attainable and portfolios that are unattainable. So I think you might see the picture like this. Here's portfolio one. Here's a portfolio two. We'll call it the risky. And here's portfolio three out here, this dot. So uh, now the question will be, which of these three portfolios is unattainable? So what I want you to realize is the allocation line represents a frontier, a boundary. This is as far as we can go. Remember, utility is going this way, higher returns at lower levels of risk, higher risk adjusted returns, but we are bound by this allocation line. So we can achieve portfolio one. That would be a choice which is attainable. We can achieve portfolio two, which lies on the allocation line. That is attainable. However, portfolio three, which lies beyond the frontier, beyond the allocation line, this is unattainable. So I think your second question relates to which portfolios are attainable and which are unattainable. Nice and easy mark there. Now, as a spin-off from this, there could be a question that relates to portfolio one. Portfolio one lies below the allocation line, below the frontier. This is a suboptimal portfolio. It is not maximizing utility we could move up to the allocation line and create a portfolio that provides higher risk adjusted returns. Make sure that you know that concept 
So this is a split off from that attainable and unattainable type of portfolio question. Okay, now the next question I think is going to come in in terms of language. And the language that I want you to be aware of is the investor's price of risk. Investor's price of risk. Now, it's easy to skip over this. The investor's price of risk is related to the slope of this allocation line. So what we need to know is uh, if investors are demanding a higher compensation for risk, the slope of this line will be steeper. If they're willing to accept risk at a lower price, it will have a shallower, a flatter slope. So I want you to know the language investors price of risk. Make sure that you know this. And in another video, you'll see it where we talk about the market price of risk. Make sure you do not confuse the two. Okay, so I'm going to leave that up there and I'm going to put in the fourth potential question that's coming. And this is a calculation. So we need to know the formula for this capital allocation line. So expected return is equal to, well, we start off with a risk-free rate. And now we're going to add in this incremental return. So this is based on the slope. So the, so the return on our risky portfolio or asset, that's this risky asset, minus the risk-free rate of return divided by the standard deviation of that risky investment. All of this will be multiplied by the standard deviation of the investor's portfolio. So let's take these one at a time so that we understand what these components are. So inside this bracket right here, the return to the risky asset minus the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation of that risky investment. This is the slope of the allocation line. This is the investor's price of risk. So make sure that we know this language and you can recognize this. Now, the other key point to be aware of that gives a lot of candidates trouble, this standard deviation of the risky asset and the standard deviation of the investor's portfolio. What is the difference? Well, here is the difference. The investor is going to be somewhere along this allocation line based on their aversion to risk. So if we had the investor over here, here's the investor's portfolio. So the standard deviation of that portfolio is found by going down to the uh, index or uh, the, the axes, or it may just be given. The risky asset and the corresponding standard deviation of that risky asset is right down at the bottom here. We can neaten that up for you right here. So now we've cracked the code. We know the difference between these elements. And I think that these are four potential questions that you can see on this exam. So if you're looking for more tips, go to our website, sign up for my newsletter. You'll receive great tips. All right, that's it. Thanks for staying.